Welcome everyone and thank you for jumping into another episode of Topic UFO, the show that is dedicated to the open and honest discussion of UFOs and UFO related activities. Tonight we have a somewhat different type of show. Um, we're not going to be talking about UFO sightings per se. Uh, we're going to be talking to an astrologer who has on a couple of occasions now um, channeled what she is re, uh, or uh, describing as uh, an ET uh, energy or, or presence. Um, and we're going to be talking to her about that. So without further ado, we are going to be talking to Helene Lipson tonight, who is a psychic, uh, intuitive astrologer, and spiritual counselor. So, Helene, are you out there, ma'am? I sure am. Hi, Rick. So uh, happy to be here with you. Well, thanks so much for um, <clears throat> taking the time out of your day to uh, to join us here. Um, you know, I think we uh, we kind of met up. It's funny, you know, when you live life on Facebook, you're you're just always running into different types of people. And to be honest with you, I can't remember exactly how we met, but there was something in your Facebook page or description or something that caught my eye. And then, of course, as we we talked a little bit more one on one, um, I said, "Oh, got to get her on the show." So I'm. Uh -huh. Appreciate it. I think it was shortly after I did an interview with Daryl Anka, who is an alien hybrid, uh, or he channels an alien hybrid um, named Bashar, and um, I had him on the show, and then soon after that, um, many folks on Facebook friended me or uh, requested my friendship when they saw that, that connection. Because that entire interview was about um, somebody who came from the future. It was almost like his future self, which was an, a gray hybrid. And that was the energy that Daryl Anka was channeling. And many people oh. know about him. And uh, that interview can be found on your, your website? Sure. It can be found on my website, which or... is www.insightsbyhelene.com. But it can also be found on my YouTube channel, which is Helene Lipson. Okay. YouTube, too. Well, listen, um, as this is a UFO uh, type of program, uh, the thing that really caught my eye was <clears throat> this uh, topic you had uh, talked about where uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but in two different readings that you were doing, I guess for, you were reading other people, um, mm -hmm. you had channeled um, an ET energy of some sort. So, Helene, before we, we get started here uh, with this ET energy and everything, can you tell us what is, in a nutshell, what is astrology? Hmm. What is astrology? That's a big question. Well, it's my belief that we come in as a soul in a body with a series of gifts and a series of challenges. And the time we're born and the day we're born and the place we're born are all significant in talking about some of the potentials that we are coming in with. Astrology is the study of these angles and the positions of the planets and how that relates to your personality, your character, your life challenges, and some of the gifts and talents that you carry in with you. Well, I'll tell you, I found it amazing that, uh, you know, we spoke on the phone a couple of weeks ago uh, just prepping for tonight's show, and uh, you had asked me my birth date, etc., and I, it just blew me away how closely you pegged me <laughs> as far as personality yeah. and stuff. I mean, it's just amazing stuff. Uh, I've never had a, a professional reading, uh, but just that short time that we had and, and that information you fed back to me was was uh, really incredible, really incredible. 
So it's, so back to It's an to, amazing thing, yeah. It, yes, it is. And so these people that you were uh doing readings for when you channel these ET energies. Um why don't we start with one of them? Uh, okay. And what were you doing and what were the circumstances surrounding uh, this channeling of the ET energy? And then uh, how did it um, present itself? How did you know it was ET energy? It was very interesting because it was just going to be a typical reading where I ask for your birth date, your time of birth, your place of birth, and I'm taking a look at your chart. And at the same time as I'm doing that, I'm also asking my spirit guides and doctors, teachers, healers, masters of the light to give me some ideas or fill my mind with what my client needs to know. And what ended up happening was instead of what was typical where my guides would be speaking or their guides would be speaking to my guides and I would be coming out with, you know, your grandma Mary is here or, you know, it seems you're about to get this new job because your father on the spirit side is telling me that. Instead of anything like that, all of a sudden I started to say things like, um, I have a message from, and I was calling them the Octorians with an O-C-T, but I, later on I looked it up and it was Arctorians with an A. And so I was just going by what I was hearing, and they basically had a message for this young lady because she was almost, she was like a part of them. They, she, they wanted to let her know that, number one, they had pre actually performed a type of psychic surgery on her or did some kind of physical work on her body and mind that they were there and helping her because and later on she did say that this is what she was wondering what was there and what who was helping her and mm -hmm. that some of the messages that she w was getting at the park and other places they were coming from these um arcturians and um, so it was almost like she put it out there to, to ask in her own mind. She, this is something that she was wondering. And through me at that reading, that is the information that was coming back to her. Most significant about it was that they were actually doing work on her body to um, help her release some packets of enslaved energy and old wounds so that she could be living her mission so she was obviously a star seed that had awakened and she just needed that validation and that is what came out i was surprised myself i have to say i i called them octorians because i had never heard of them before later on looked it up and saw that there was um et's called arctorians and they were actually um they actually even talked about a uh, council that was working with her, and she it resonated deeply with her. It was so, almost like she knew all this anyway, and it was just that they had come through to validate her experiences. So you actually went out on the web, <clears throat> excuse me, and and there are beings out there called Arc Arctorians. Right. And actually, did you find out about these up. things? Uh, did you later on she wrote me and um and told me that she looked this up later and then she told me that it was arctorians and then later i went and researched them too so i and i took such an interest i even um listened to somebody named suzanne lee who was um a channel and also somebody that was similar to my client, obviously, who had a connection with this group of ETs. Wow. Now, is that in the uh, um, astrology circles, astrology world, uh, is it um, seldom that you hear about someone channeling ET energy or ET presence, or is this something that happens quite often? This is rare. 
Oh, really? Rare for me. I don't have a lot of. I, I didn't have a lot of experience. I'm working as a psychic astrologer, and I use the astrology chart to help me open to a person. You know, your birth chart is only a series of potentials and what you're coming in with. It's a starting point for your life, but we also have free will. So. To be as accurate as I am, I need to also work psychically because sometimes people don't follow the exact blueprint that they came in with. They might have made a soul agreement they were going to have a child. As life went on, they decided against it because they went in a different direction. Free will can take you anywhere. The only piece of astrology that is for certain um, a descriptor of your potentials and and what you're coming in with is this natal or birth chart and after that yeah it's all channeling and intuition and psychic work so but only on two occasions i mean that was a real surprise to me i Mm. i didn't know but oftentimes in these readings i ask in advance that i be a channel for the good of all involved and that i i tap into what the client wants to know and that was what she wanted to know she wanted to know what happened to me what was standing over me who was doing this to me they were helping her though it was not um it was not a horrific scene or anything scary she actually was not afraid at all of um these entities she was peaceful Hmm and and grateful and had felt a weight had lifted after this experience so but she had she didn't know if it was her imagination or if this was real if this was real so it was quite validating i see so when you're giving these readings and uh you know you're channeling this whatever it is information uh what does it feel like within yourself when you start, say, for instance, uh, this one with the Arcturians? What goes through your mind is what what is happening inside you when those messages are coming through? Can, can you describe it? <laughs> That's an excellent question. You know, what's going through me is I am so removed from myself. I don't have a thought in my head. I have no judgment whatsoever as I'm saying the words. I'm there, but I'm almost removed from myself. Um, I am. A, I was very aware um, of everything that that transpired in the session, but I was almost like I had no feelings, no judgment, no emotion, no reaction. I was actually just being a clear channel. Or just, you know, what is a channel? It's actually like a pipe that is that is allowing uh, something to be uh, running through it. Flow and, through and, it. Uh, and that's all I was doing. So only later on was lo- I like, oh, my goodness. Well, this was different. I actually didn't even feel different. And it made me start to wonder that even though... Um, I, I made me start to wonder if, if that experience had happened more frequently to me, but they didn't name themselves. Like, because oftentimes there's some kind of group of teachers or some kind of group that's collectively speaking, and um, I don't know the source of where it's coming from. I ask all the time that I'd be surrounded in the white light and the triple walls of protection and the blue light of healing, and I'm asking for only the highest and the light. So I know that it's a positive entity, but um, I, it, it, felt, it felt very similar to everything else, except for the words that I was saying were very different. Well, now, was this the first time, this, this incident we're, we're talking about, was this the first time that you actually channeled some sort of ET presence? That was the second time, Second actually. time, huh? And, and the first time was... Um, uh, somebody that was a telephone reading, and she asked, who helps me? Who's helping me? Who's guiding me? Who are my guides? What, what is, where is my intuition? Where is this sense of knowingness coming from? And at that point, with that, I saw a picture of a 
triangle um, and a symbol of a triangle. And then when I was speaking with this person, they uh, said it is, it's us. We're a group of um, Pleiadian teachers. Ah, Pleiadians. Pleiadian teachers, and so I was like, oh, okay. Well, and now, so, but but the information that was shared, I mean, the, what's different than when I read stuff like in uh, the Federation of Light or other things, there's no, they were not speaking like, oh, dear ones, you know, like a, con, you know, a little bit of, um, like a little condescending, oh dear ones, like we're this and you're these little little earth creatures and we're these. Big. They were speaking like they were on an equal level, like we were exactly one of them. That was what what happened on both occasions with these Arcturians and the Pleiadians. They were just speaking, not like we were little earthlings and they were big old. And um, there was there was nothing grandiose about the experience like they weren't like we have a special and important mission for you that's mm. not how that they they spoke they were just validating these people's experiences that they had one of uh, one person the one that uh, the first time the person was actually a physician and um she didn't expect these an the, the, that answer at all wow not at all she wanted to know where she was getting this information about um, medications and, and uh, the development of, um, she was trying to take herbs and some um, natural products um, for her patients to use in lieu of pharmaceutical medications. And um, she asked, where are these ideas coming from? Who is helping me? And then that's how this Pleiadian answer came out. She was this was she was not expecting that. So I was, not expecting was she? That. I mean, this must have been quite a uh, uh, revelation uh, to her. I'm thinking, uh, what was her reaction that there were these ETs um, guiding her or helping her? Was she open and? Uh, yes, she was. To the whole she situation. She wasn't afraid at all. She was not afraid. She she just was just taking it in. She found it fascinating. I think because she saw the symbol of the triangle, and then I, when I said it was the symbol, I see a, the symbol of the triangle. She knew because that was the symbol that she would get. And before they started speaking, they showed me the symbol of the triangle. And again, that was very validating for her. She's like, okay, because I see that triangle. That's what I see. And then when I said that, and I guess this triangle was connected or affiliated with this group of teachers that were helping her. So uh, now that you, you know you have this capability to channel such entities, do you ever try to do just, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one type of, of channeling, not where you're reading somebody, but just between yourself and the outside universe to try to talk to these entities? Um, it's, it's interesting. I, I uh, have tried to do this and then don't necessarily remember what I said or what I was thinking. So I have um, a show called, called um, Cosmic Current, and my co-host, C.J. Miller, agreed to ask me questions, and then we would record it, and I would, I would channel this out, and that's what we have planned. So that's interesting you asked that. Because on my own, uh, I, I, I can't tell. Mm -hmm. I mean, in other words, I'm sitting back and I can't tell what is meditative messages, what is coming from my higher self, what is just downloads from even my own guides or angels. Or I didn't know, understand where it was coming from, but if we were to actually direct it toward um, the, the benevolent ET energy, um, yeah, you know, I uh, want I, be I believe it will come out. I believe it will come out. 
I wanted I to touch very... base on that, though, that, you know, the, the entities that you've channeled so far have all been benevolent. Uh, yes. Are you worried at all that you uh, might get a hold of, of the opposite uh, type? I think, honestly, by the laws of attraction, like attracts like. So if I'm a high vibrational being. Now, I, I had a recent interview with Kelly Lachey, and she said even non-benevolent uh, non ETs or ETs that are not pure of intent will try anything. I have never encountered anything like that. All I've encountered were, well, these two tangible experiences, um, and they were positive. They were more than positive. I actually felt wonderful, wonderful speaking to them, almost like I was at home. I was so comfortable. Hmm. So I had, I had no fear. I believe that I can do this. I am going to try this with uh, CJ asking some questions and, and us channeling them in. But alone, no, I haven't had um, success because, again, it was a, it, I was working with somebody else on both of these occasions, and right. they were asking the questions, and it was coming through me because that was part of our agreement that I was going to be a clear channel for them. So we're going to have to set it up in such a way that it works like the way it did in those sessions. So I wanted to ask you some um, somewhat generic questions because I'm interested uh, to see what the replies from someone such as yourself, psychic, astrologer, uh, what their thoughts are on it. Um, so maybe we'll, we'll play uh, three questions here. What are your thoughts, if any, on uh, the uh, December 21st, 2012? Do you have any? I think that I do. I think that, it, that December 21st, 2012 is the last day of an era. I'm not expecting there to be some kind of monumental, earth-shaking, apocalyptic event. Or apocalyptic, meaning, you know, world war. I don't know, some kind of uh, treacherous, crazy thing. I also don't expect instant ascension on that day also. But I do believe that that marks the last day of this era. And we start a new era where we are moving into a fifth dimensional reality, our frequencies are are um are raising i don't know how mm -hmm, else mm -hmm. to describe it what is happening to us is a veil is lifting between um the unknown and the mysterious and and uh where we came from and who we really are and what is out there a lot of answers to many many questions will be answered at that time you know, so it fascinates me. It fascinates me that, you know, we can we can put a man on the moon. We have uh, probes that have landed on Mars. We've invented all this crazy stuff, and yet, honestly, we have no idea why we're here. <laughs> we just. I think that we have been um, programmed in such a way to not look within. And if we all were looking within, we would see our connection to, to our E.T. cousins. There's no way that we're here alone. Yeah. There's no way that it's only us here. I agree. I, I, I say that, I mean, so confidently. Even though I only channel two E.T.s, okay, and I am very aware that there is something out there. And... I think with sometimes the media shows a lot of shows to scare you about ETs. I think a lot of those, as we're moving on to a higher, um, a higher form of reality, a higher, a different kind of life where we're embracing the divine feminine, we're going to be living with through the heart. We're letting go of the ideas of war. All of our institutions are crumbling, crumbling. Mm -hmm. There's only going to be love left. 
These ETs are actually helping us along. I believe that they are um, in the background in some ways have even prevented um, wars and um, big catastrophic events. Oh, I absolutely I do, too. I think there's, there's there's proof of that uh, with the UFOs that have shut down missile silos and all of that. I mean, absolutely. And reptilian bases were also shut down. I believe that strongly as well. Yep. Um, that resonates with me. I also feel that because the frequency of the Earth generally is, it, Gaia has already moved on from the third dimension, and she's waiting for us. Gaia is the Earth energy as a spirit of the earth she's waiting for us to align with her and raise our frequency and vibration and that is happening we are we're finding ourselves um asking all the questions that we haven't asked earlier it's a miracle you're right how did we not ask what are we here for who are we what's our mission well i think we've we've always allowed religion to to uh, you know, tackle that question. Um, so yeah. uh, you know, it is what it is. There. It's amazing. I don't think we need a middleman anymore. <laughs> like yeah. a middleman. Like we'll have to ask, pray to the. We'll have to ask the saints, or we'll have to pray to the saints, or we'll have to pray to another person, or we'll have to pray. It, it, it could just be between us and whatever is out there. Yep. What about the the UFOs, the the objects, the orbs, the crafts that people um, have sighted? Uh, of course, we've got them on videotape all over the place now, and and photographs, digital photographs. What do you? What are your thoughts on that? Do you think these are um, are here I mean, for some? There's so much proof. This is beyond a shadow of a doubt that this exists. Why do you think it's they're here, definitely. though? Why do you think they're flying around? Well, they all have different purposes. Just like, um, you know, if you look at the bird kingdom, there's many different types of birds, and there's many different types of there's many different types of species of UFOs as well. Mm -hmm. Not just one one kind or two kinds or five kinds. There's a lot. Just as there's so many different variations of bugs or birds or uh, you know animals. Um, so, um, some, when we talk about these orbs, they are just beings of energy that are on the astral plane, uh, or, um, beings of energy that are, are multi-dimensional energy that will appear. Uh, they don't have a body, but they are something. Yeah. And when I see an orb, I'm usually thinking that it's something positive, coming from a positive place. I I feel like um, there is some or, uh, inorganic energy that comes in the form of archons um, that is negative. They look like, almost like little fetuses, little blobs little blobs of sort of gray hmm. and that's the only um i've never seen a reptilian uh, archons are the only non-benevolent i don't even know what to call them they're not not organic do you have you ever heard of archons i have not i have not no this would be the only form of something that would come in and want to um, almost live off of your fear or your um, anxiety. A parasitic and type of thing, huh? Parasitic, yeah. Mm. So when you think of it, the archons are the negative side of that, and these orbs are the positive side of that, beautiful bright lights. And, um, I think we, we, we must have good and evil out there in the universe. I mean, I just think wherever you go, there's got to be the, the good and the evil. I just, the good and the bad. Whatever. Yeah. But things are shaping up, and I think almost like 
we're moving away from that because here we're in a duality, a world of duality where there is good and bad and right and wrong. And um, that provides the ground for judgment, you know. This, <laughs> and so in the end, what is a 5D reality is going to be almost like singularity where everybody is okay, whatever you are. You have... You're either letting the light in or you're not, but we're not rocked and we're not judged and we're going on our mission and everything is known. I think a lot of the times we're seeing that what's coming in people's hearts and what's coming out of their mouths are two different things, and I think at the end wow. there'll be only truth. Yeah, this is absolutely. the frequency that a lot of these ETs exist on, where there's only truth. They're, 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 they're on almost a higher plane than us. Yep. Yep. They just want us to be with them. I totally agree. Well, Helene, we uh, unfortunately have kind of gotten to the end of our time tonight. I just want to say thank you. Um, it's been a very interesting conversation. I knew it would be. Um, but I can't thank you enough for, for coming on. I want to uh, uh, repeat that um, your website that's um, www.insightsbyhelene.com, and I'll uh, yes, I'll have that up here on the screen so people can see yeah. it. Yeah, insightsbyhelene.com. Okay, and um, do you have any uh, uh, weekly or monthly shows, or uh, and are there names well, for these shows, or what is it? <laughs> sure, listeners can. Um, Check me out on um, Blog Talk Radio. I have a show called Cosmic Current. My co-host is C.J. Miller. I have another show called Embracing What's Real. I also um, just finished a series with a spiritual teacher named Analia Benz called Up Close and Personal with Analia Benz. So, yes, three different shows. And, uh, You're keeping very all busy. Of that I am, but all of that information is available on my website. Okay. And, of course, if somebody wanted a, a, a reading, they could contact you through your website as well, right? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. And you do, uh, do you do both in-person and telephonic, um, or is yes. it all telephonic? Or? It's all, t I have a lot of telephone readings. But I'm located now in the South Florida area, and I do do readings in person and parties um, in person. But um, many of my clients are from all over the country, and so I do mostly phone readings. Great. Well, listen, Helene, thanks again. Uh, great, great talk with you. Um, Let's, let's cross our fingers and hope that uh, December 21st uh, uh, does take us to something uh, better. If, that, if that's all that happened, <laughs> I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. You know, if we, if, if we just would make, take one step to bettering ourselves, I think it would uh, uh, be great. That's well, going to be. All right. Well, listen, Helene, thanks again. We will be staying in touch. And... Um, have a great evening. You too. All right. Namaste. Uh huh. Bye bye. Bye. Open the door, you'll find the secret. To find the answer is to keep it. In the end, what is a 5D reality is going to be almost like singularity, where everybody is okay, whatever you are. You have, you're either letting the light in or you're not, but we're not rocked and we're not judged and we're going on our mission and everything is known. I think a lot of the times we're seeing that what's coming in people's hearts and what's coming out of their mouths are two different things, and I think at the end wow. there will be only truth. 
Yeah, this is absolutely. the frequency that a lot of these ETs exist on, where there's only truth. They're, 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 they're on almost a higher plane than us. Yep, yep. They just want us to be with them. I totally agree. Well, Helene, we uh, unfortunately have kind of gotten to the end of our time tonight. I just want to say thank you. Um, it's been a very interesting conversation. I knew it would be. Um, but I can't thank you enough for, for coming on. I want to uh, uh, repeat that um, your website, that's um, www.insightsbyhelene.com. And I'll, uh, yes, I'll have that up here on the screen so people can see yeah. it. Yeah, insightsbyhelene.com. Okay. And um, do you have any uh, uh, weekly or monthly shows or uh, and are there names well, for these shows or what is it? <laughs> sure. Listeners can um, check me out on um, Blog Talk Radio. I have a show called Cosmic Current. My co-host is C.J. Miller. I have another show called Embracing What's Real. I also um, just finished a series with a spiritual teacher named Analia Benz called Up Close and Personal with Analia Benz. So, yes, three different shows. And, uh, You're keeping very all busy. Of that, I am, but all of that information is available on my website. Okay. And, of course, if somebody wanted a, a, a reading, they could contact you through your website as well, right? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. And you do, uh, bo do you do both in person and telephonic um, or is yes. it all telephonic or it's all t I have a lot of telephone readings but I'm located now in the South Florida area and I do do readings in person and parties um, in person but um, many of my clients are from all over the country and so I do mostly phone readings. great well, listen, Helene, thanks again. Uh, great, great talk with you. Um, let's, f let's cross our fingers and hope that uh, December 21st uh, uh, does take to, uh, to join us here. Um, you know, I think we, uh, we kind of met up. It's funny, you know, when you live life on Facebook, you're, you're just always running into different types of people. And to be honest with you, I can't remember exactly how we met. But there was something in your Facebook page or description or something that caught my eye. And then, of course, as we, we talked a little bit more one-on-one, -on -one, um, I said, oh, got to get her on the show. So I uh, appreciate it. I think it was shortly after I did an interview with Daryl Anka, who is an alien hybrid, uh, or he channels an alien hybrid um, named Bashar. And um, I had him on the show, and then soon after that, um, many folks on Facebook friended me or uh, requested my friendship when they saw that, that connection, because that entire interview was about um, somebody who came from the future. It was almost like his future self, which was an, a gray hybrid. And that was the energy that Daryl Anka was channeling, and many people oh. know about him. And uh, that interview can be found on your, your website? Sure. It can be found on my website, which or... is www.insightsbyhelene.com. But it can also be found on my YouTube channel, which is Helene Lipson. Okay. YouTube, too. Well, listen... Um... As this is a UFO uh, type of program, uh, the thing that really caught my eye was <clears throat> this uh, topic you had uh, talked about where, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but in two different readings that you were doing, I guess for, you were reading other people, um, you had channeled, um, an ET energy of some sort. So, Helene, before we, we get started here uh, with this ET energy and everything, can you tell us what is, in a nutshell, what is astrology? Hmm. 
What is astrology? That's a big question. Well, it's my belief that we come in as a soul and a body with a series of gifts and a series of challenges. And the time we're born and the day we're born and the place we're born are all significant in talking about some of the potentials that we are coming in with. Astrology is the study of these angles and the positions of the planets and how that relates. Care about someone channeling ET energy or ET presence, or is this something that happens quite often? This is rare. Oh, really? Rare for me. I don't have a lot of, I, I didn't have a lot of experience. I'm working as a psychic astrologer, and I use the astrology chart to help me open to a person. You know, your birth chart is only a series of potentials and what you're coming in with. It's a starting point for your life, but we also have free will. So to be as accurate as I am, I need to also work psychically because sometimes people don't follow the exact blueprint that they came in with. They might have made a soul agreement they were going to have a child. As life went on, they decided against it because they went in a different direction. Free will can take you anywhere. The only piece of astrology that is for certain um, a descriptor of your potentials and, and what you're coming in with is this natal or birth chart. And after that, yeah, it's all channeling and intuition and psychic work. So, but on, only on two occasions. I mean, that was a real surprise to me. I, uh, I didn't know, but oftentimes in these readings, I ask in advance that I be a channel for the good of all involved and that I, I tap into what the client wants to know. And that was what she wanted to know. She wanted to know what happened to me. What was standing over me? Who was doing this to me? They were helping her, though. It was not um, It was not a horrific scene or anything scary. She actually was not afraid at all of um, th these entities. She was peaceful hmm. and, and grateful and had felt a weight had lifted after this experience. So but <clears throat> she had... She didn't know if it was her imagination or if this was real. If this was real, so it was quite validating. I see. So, when you're giving these readings, <clears throat> and uh, you know you're channeling this, whatever it is, information. Uh, what does it feel like within yourself when you start? Say, for instance, uh, this one with the arc. Torians, what goes through your mind is what what is happening inside you when those messages are coming through? Can, can you describe it? <laughs> That's an excellent question. You know what's going through me is I am so removed from myself. I don't have a thought in my head. I have no judgment whatsoever as I'm saying the words. I'm there, but I'm almost removed these of potentials and what you're coming in with it's a starting point for your life but we also have free will so to be as accurate as i am i need to also work psychically because sometimes people don't follow the exact blueprint that they came in with they might have made a soul agreement they were going to have a child as life went on they decided against it because they went in a different direction Free will can take you anywhere. The only piece of astrology that is for certain um, a descriptor of your potentials and, and what you're coming in with is this natal or birth chart. And after that, yeah, it's all channeling and intuition and psychic work. So, but on, only on two occasions. I mean, that was a real surprise to me. I, mm. uh, I didn't know, but oftentimes in these readings, I ask in advance that I be a channel for the good of all involved and that I, I tap into what the client wants to know. And that was what she wanted to know. She wanted to know what happened to me, what was standing over me, who was doing this to me. They were helping her, though. It was not, um, it was not a horrific scene or anything scary. She actually was not afraid at all of... Um, these entities. She was peaceful. 
hmm. and and grateful and had felt a weight had lifted after this experience. So, but <clears throat> she had she didn't know if it was her imagination or if this was real. If this was real, so it was quite validating. I see. So, when you're giving these readings, <clears throat> and uh, you know you're channeling this whatever it is, information, uh, what does it feel like within yourself when you start, say, for instance, uh, this one with the Arcturians, what goes through your mind is what, what is happening inside you when those messages are coming through? Can, can you describe it? <laughs> That's an excellent question. You know what's going through me is... I am so removed from myself. I don't have a thought in my head. I have no judgment whatsoever as I'm saying the words. I'm there, but I'm almost removed from myself. Um, I am. A, I was very aware um, of everything that that transpired in the session, but I was almost like I had no feelings, no judgment, no emotion, no reaction. I was actually just being a clear channel or just, you know, what is a channel? It's actually like a pipe. That um, your website, that's um, www.insightsbyhelene.com. And I'll, uh, yes, I'll have that up here on the screen so people can see yeah. it. Yeah, insightsbyhelene.com. Okay. And um, do you have any... Uh, uh, weekly or monthly shows, or uh, and are there names well, for these shows, or what is it? <laughs> sure, listeners can um, check me out on um, Blog Talk Radio. I have a show called Cosmic Current. My co-host is C.J. Miller. I have another show called Embracing What's Real. I also um, just finished a series with a spiritual teacher named Analia Benz called Up Close and Personal with Analia Benz. So, yes, three different shows. And, uh, You're keeping very all busy. Of that, I am, but all of that information is available on my website. Okay. And, of course, if somebody wanted a, a, a reading, they could contact you through your website as well, right? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. And you do, uh, bo do you do both... In person and telephonic, um, or is yes. it all telephonic? Or it's all. T I have a lot of telephone readings, but I'm located now in the South Florida area, and I do do readings in person and parties um, in person. But okay. um, many of my clients are from all over the country, and so I do mostly phone readings. Great. Well, listen, Helene, thanks again. Uh, great, great talk with you. Um, let's, f let's cross our fingers and hope that uh, December 21st uh, uh, does take us to something uh, better. If, that, if that's all that happened, <laughs> I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. You know, if we, if, if we just would make, take one step to bettering ourselves, I think it would uh, uh, be great. Well, be. All right. Well, listen, Helene, thanks again. We will be staying in touch and um, have a great evening. You too. All right. Namaste. Uh huh. Bye bye. is to keep it you believe it when you find something screaming across your mind and on that day also but i do believe that that marks the last day of this era and we start a new era where we are moving into a fifth dimensional reality. Our frequencies are are um, are raising. I don't know how mm -hmm, else mm -hmm. to describe it. What is happening to us is a veil is lifting, 
between um, the unknown and the mysterious and, and uh, where we came from and who we really are and what is out there a lot of answers to many many questions will be answered at that time you know it fascinates me it fascinates me that you know we can we can put a man on the moon we have uh, probes that have landed on mars we've invented all this crazy stuff and yet honestly we have no idea why we're here (laughs) We just I think that we have been um, programmed in such a way to not look within. And if we all were looking within, we would see our connection to, to our ET cousins. There's no way that we're here alone. Yeah. There's no way that it's only us here. I agree. I, I, I say that, I mean, so confidently. Even though I only channeled two ETs, okay, and I am very aware that there is something out there. And I think with sometimes the media shows a lot of shows to scare you about ETs. I think a lot of those, as we're moving on to a higher, um, a higher form of reality, a higher, a different kind of life where we're embracing the divine feminine, we're going to be living with through the heart, we're letting go of the ideas of war. All of our institutions are crumbling, crumbling. Mm -hmm. There's only going to be love left. These ETs are actually helping us along. I believe that they are um, in the background in some ways have even prevented um, wars and um, big catastrophic events. Oh, I absolutely do, too. I think there's, there's there's proof of that. Uh, with the UFOs that have shut down missile silos and all of that. I mean... Absolutely. And reptilian bases were also shut down. I believe that strongly as well. Yep. Um, That resonates with me. I also feel that because the frequency of the Earth generally is... Gaia has already moved on from the third dimension. And she's waiting for us. Gaia is the earth. Life went on. They decided against it because they went in a different direction. Free will can take you anywhere. The only piece of astrology that is for certain um, a descriptor of your potentials and, and what you're coming in with is this natal or birth chart. And after that, yeah, it's all channeling and intuition and psychic work. So, but only on two occasions. I mean, that was a real surprise to me. I I didn't know, but oftentimes in these readings, I ask in advance that I be a channel for the good of all involved and that I, I tap into what the client wants to know. And that was what she wanted to know. She wanted to know what happened to me, what was standing over me, who was doing this to me. They were helping her, though. It was not um, it was not a horrific scene or anything scary. She actually was not afraid at all of um, th- these entities. She was peaceful hmm. and and grateful and had felt a weight had lifted after this experience. So but she had, she didn't know if it was her imagination or if this was real if this was real. So it was quite validating. I see. So. When you're giving these readings and, uh, you know, you're channeling this, whatever it is, information, uh, what does it feel like within yourself when you start, say, for instance, uh, this one with the Arcturians, what goes through your mind is what, what is happening inside you when those messages are coming through? Can can you describe it? (laughs) That's an excellent question. You know what's going through me is I am so removed from myself, I don't have a thought in my head. I have no judgment whatsoever as I'm saying the words. I'm there, but I'm almost removed from myself. Um, I I was very aware um, of everything that, that transpired in the session, but 
I was almost like I had no feelings, no judgment, no emotion, no reaction. I was actually just being a clear channel or just, you know, what is a channel? It's actually like a pipe that is that is allowing uh, something to be uh, running through it. Flow and, through and, it. Uh, and that's all I was doing. So only later on was I like, oh, my goodness, well, this was different. I actually didn't even feel different, and it made me start to wonder that even though um, – alien hybrid uh, or he channels an alien hybrid um named bashar and um i had him on the show and then soon after that um many folks on facebook friended me or uh, requested my friendship when they saw that that connection because that entire interview was about um somebody who came from the future it was almost like his future self which was an, a gray hybrid, and that was the energy that Daryl Anka was channeling, and many people oh. know about him. And uh, that interview can be found on your, your website? Sure. It can be found on my website, which or... is www.insightsbyhelene.com, but it can also be found on my YouTube channel, which is Helene Lipson. Okay. YouTube, too. Well, listen, um, as this is a UFO uh, type of program, uh, the thing that really caught my eye was <clears throat> this uh, topic you had uh, talked about where, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but in two different readings that you were doing, I guess, for you were reading other people, um, you had channeled um, an ET energy of some sort. So, Helene, before we, we get started here uh, with this ET energy and everything, can you tell us what is, in a nutshell, what is astrology? Hmm. What is astrology? That's a big question. Well, it's my belief that we come in as a soul in a body with a series of gifts and a series of challenges. And the time we're born and the day we're born and the place we're born are all significant in talking about some of the potentials that we are coming in with. Astrology is the study of these angles and the positions of the planets and how that relates to your personality, your character, your life challenges, and some of the gifts and talents that you carry in with you. Well, I'll tell you, I found it amazing that, uh, you know, we spoke on the phone a couple of weeks ago uh, just prepping for tonight's show, and uh, you had asked me my birth date, et cetera. And I, I, it just blew me away how closely you pegged me <laughs> as far as personality yeah. and stuff. I mean, it's just amazing stuff. Uh, I've never had a, a professional reading, uh, but just that short time that we had 